I like this question. How do you train people to respond positively? Is it intensive? Is it repetitive? Is it both? So how do you train people to respond positively? Yeah. So again, it comes back to, and I'm thinking back to one of your other on the couch interviews about that self-awareness. Mm. Um, Marty Sellerman uh, did some great work around identifying whether we're more optimistic or pessimistic. Positive psychology, yeah. I am a true believer in soaking up as much knowledge about myself, not from an ego perspective, but so I know what I'm going to do in, in that situation. So to say, um, am I going to be happy all the time? Probably not mm. realistic. Mm. But to respond in a positive sense, I go back to some of the formal training that I've done, say, as a facilitator. Mm. Um, when I'm under pressure, under the room, and someone's really having a go at the topic we're talking about, they're really pinning me or they're mm. pinning somebody else. There's a point at which I think we need to let go and be realistic. You don't, you don't always have to respond with the happy face. Asking a question can actually invoke more, more discussion. So rather than responding positively, quite often when we're training facilitators or uh, some you know, people that want to do the sort of work that you and I do, we'll get them to use the power of questions, mm. just like you're doing with me. Mm. The irony is I'm normally asking the questions, now you're asking me mm. the questions. And to ask a question to change it into a positive frame or to look for another opportunity would be the key. I wouldn't necessarily train people to respond in a positive way all the time. What we tend to focus on is to get people to ask the right questions. Because mm. if you think about it, the brain cannot not answer a question. Mm. So you just thought about that just then. Your brain cannot not answer a question. So we don't always have to give the answer. Mm. It doesn't always have to be a positive response. What I would focus on is asking a question that reframes the situation so you can find an opportunity to move through. We, we've gone through a, you know, a, a process of some of the war stories that have happened, answering some of the people's questions here. And it's, it's, to me, it's a bit wishy-washy. Like you, give the, you give the answers and it's a bit, well, this is what you do, this is how you respond to it, this is how you can, you know, you can get yourself out of that situation. So I want to get to the real how. And, and I love the, the couple of acronyms that you have with the how do you respond to and two of your acronyms are one is OMG and the other one is WTF. Yeah, what the? yeah exactly and, and I'm, when I read that and I just went I can't wait to find out what the OMG is and, the, and especially the WTF so maybe let's just split them both up just define for me the OMG. Yeah okay so what sits behind that is um, we can train people with knowledge but is it really going to stick most of the time, the answer is no. Yeah. So what we try to do is we try to associate um, uh, a way of doing the hows to something that's really going to resonate with people. So um, you get a text message and it says OMG. Most people knows, know what that stands for. Mm. So for us, the OMG acronym for how we deal with change or how we deal with these uh, situations really goes back to the O being how can I own what's happened. If you think about receiving feedback, someone wise once said to me, if you know you're going to get feedback for something that you've done, stand in the ground first and own it. Really own it. Then you can be receptive and you're not going to be defensive. So if we as a business owner or a facilitator or a manager make a mistake, the first step of the OMG, the O is for own it. Mm. The M stands for make it a learning. So we've been talking about the, the learning uh, part in some of those examples. You have to make it a learning experience. There's always something you can learn from it. So own it, make it a learning, and the G is get back on the horse. Mm. So you referenced before uh, a question that we got about avoidance. The best thing you can do is to get back up on the horse, but you have to do it with humility. Mm. And you have to do it as a genuine person. You can't wear the mask. Mm. So own it, make it a learning experience, and then get back on the horse straight away. Okay. If you do that with integrity, honesty, and you're upfront about it, you really can't lose. The situation could go different directions, but you've got a, you've got a different relationship with the people that you're dealing with. Mm. So go through this process then. I turn up for a, uh, for a session. Um, I'm prepared for a topic, and then the client comes out and says, that's not the topic, this is the topic. So go through that process for me. <laughs> On, on the OMG, how does that work? So if in, the, in that case, well, let's even take your example of, uh, uh, of being in Brisbane and your gig was in Toowoomba. I want this oh, example. Okay, well, this one. <laughs> if, you got, if you got the topic wrong, 
Yeah. If it was oh, your okay. if it was your error, because that's where the OMG will apply. That if it's our mistake or our error, then the first step is to own it. So to, to acknowledge to yourself first, right. I got this wrong. Well. So okay. then. The next step is to make it a learning. So to share, to be able to have the humility to share that with your client and say, I understood it to this, but that's okay. Mm. We can still work through this topic that you've got. You're giving them the confidence. You're giving them the certainty that you are still the credible facilitator, the consultant that can handle that. Don't I look like a fool? Depends how you do it. If you do it with arrogance, you probably will look like a fool. No, I'm just saying, I'll, I'll turn up. I've, okay, it was my fault. Let's just say it was my fault. And I turn up and I got the topic totally wrong. I got yesterday's topic mixed up with tomorrow's topic. We've all probably done that, yeah. Yeah, and I've turned up. Don't I look like an absolute pillock? Don't they look at me and go, mate, you're just unorganised? They could, but it's how you handle yourself in that moment. I, I'll go, I, okay, let me go through your process. Mate, I'm going to own this. It's my fault. I looked at tomorrow's program and I'm doing it today. So I'm owning it. Make it a learning experience. Mate, just to let you know, I've learnt from this and I'm making it a learning experience and now you say I've got to get back on the horse. But let's carry on, even though I know I made a mistake. It's There's a piece missing there though, Gerald. You're doing that dialogue with yourself. Yeah. If you do it with your client, when you get to that, make it a learning. Yeah. And you step back and you say, wow, there's something happened in our communication. Yeah. How can we improve that communication? We did get it wrong on our end. Mm. We had emails going back and forward. The difference, and I'm sorry, I'm putting the, the heat back on you now. Mm. The difference between, oh, yeah, I can use this acronym and oh, it's not going to do anything, is if you do it by yourself, have no effect. If you do it in partnership with your client or with the group that you've got, mm. it will make a difference. Because if we ask for help, people by their nature want to help us. Think of it, we're both facilitators. If we don't know the answer to something, we're probably going to throw it to our group and get them to answer it for us. Mm. People's nature is they want to help us. Mm. I know if I'm in front of a group of 500 people and I'm writing on a flip chart, I go dyslexic, I can't spell. Yeah. First thing I do is I turn to the audience and say, can someone help me with this? And someone always jumps in and helps. Mm. So the difference in the example you just gave is if you do that dialogue, you do that process on your mm. own, yeah, they're probably going to yeah. out the door. But if you do that in partnership with them, if you share that and you make that learning even more valuable, then mm. you're going to engage them. You are going to be able to get back on the horse. Mm. Yes, they're going to look at you and they're going to judge you, but it's what you do next. It's that action that you take and you show that confidence and that certainty that you can move forward, you can move mm. into it. If you get caught up in the emotion and thinking, oh, I look, I look like an idiot or mm. they're not going to like me, you're not going to be able to move forward. You have to do it in partnership with them. So what's the WTF? Uh, so the WTF is the one where it's out of our control. And most people, when they hear WTF, they think it's what the fudge. Well, we can't say the other word because we're, we're on camera. You can. And the, the reason we came up with, <laughs> yeah, the reason we come up with that acronym is that that's normally the reaction that people will have in a scenario where something goes wrong. Mm. Uh, what the, uh, quick example. Um, uh, we're here in Queensland. So uh, I was up at Mackay, at Mackay Surf Club. Mackay, is in central Queensland on the coast. It's a regional area. Um, there's not a lot of surf there because of the location. Um, we were there in summer. And in summer, they get a lot of stingers coming into the beach, so they have to close those beaches off. We were doing a, a team and a leadership uh, program where we had all this equipment set up outside, and we were going to blindfold all the participants and lead them outside to go and solve this big, complex issue outside. Unbeknownst to me, a busload of children from the country had driven to the coast to have their day at the beach, but the beach was closed because of the stingers. Mm. They saw our ropes and our witches' hats and all of our equipment set up, and they thought it was an absolute field day for them, and they mucked everything up. I went outside by instinct just before we brought the participants out, and I saw all these kids tearing everything apart, and my first reaction was, what the... But because we've been using this process for, for a long time, I realised the reaction I had, and I switched that and said, OK, the WTF really stands for what's the big picture. So the W, I had to stand back and say, what's the big picture? What's my why? Why am I here? In that situation, we were there to take these participants through a process of solving complex problems. I had a complex problem in front of me. The T stands for take the emotion out. So we've talked a bit about emotion. 
I'm sure you could relate with the emotions that I probably had at that moment that mm. I wanted to throttle the teachers that had the kids mm. and I wanted to do all these things but I had to look at the anger that came up, the surprise and I had to make that work for me. The only way you can take that emotion out, you can't do it in your head. You've got to acknowledge it and you've got to feel it first. And this is that self-awareness and that self-control that, uh, mm. that you and Ben were talking about. We have to acknowledge what's going on and then listen to it and do something with it. I knew that I had to take some form of action. The F, instead of the fudge word, stands for focus. We had to focus on the opportunity. I had limited time. I rallied up the teachers and the kids and I actually used the theory that we're using with these mm. executives and rallied them to set everything back up. The, the good side to that story is that we film the participants doing their things so we can show them feedback. Mm. We actually filmed a little bit of the kids setting it back up and, and showed them. So when you say, oh, should I own my mistakes and, and whatever with the client, we actually showed them. We said, this stuffed up just before you did it mm. and showed them how we use exactly the same process with the children and the teachers to reset everything as they were being let out blindfolded. So the WTF is... What's the big picture? You need to step back away from the situation. That helps you detach from the emotion that will come up. Then you need to take the emotion out. Only way you can do that is to be honest with yourself mm. and recognise what emotion is happening in me. What's the purpose of that? And the F is to focus on opportunity. And you have to look for what can I make out of this situation. 